there has never been revival in the history of the world. For those of you who have been students of it and I have been lucky to study a big part of, of, of revival, I've taught it in, in Bible schools and some Bible schools have actually adopted it by the grace of God. I, I have been a student of revival and I have learned this for a fact that you cannot sustain. You can, you know, fan a flame, but you cannot sustain a flame of revival without the spirit of reformation. The Bible says in Hebrews that there was a certain presence that was not revealed to the children of Israel until a certain time of reformation. They used to think of righteousness as a place of washing here and washing these and, and it stood in meats and drinks and diverse, you know, washings. The Bible calls them carnal ordinances. And the Bible says all of these were imposed on them. Imposed. That means it was not the mind of God, but it was imposed by the ideas of those who uh, generated traditions and human-made doctrines and they came in to define God as they knew him, not necessarily as he was. But the Bible says, but a time of reformation came. And when a time of reformation came, God introduced man to the deepest level of his presence. Right now, some of the things I'm going to speak in this, in this room, in these minutes that I have with you, some of you are going to be disturbed that maybe you knew the gospel differently. And I'm certain that some of you might not agree, and that's okay if you don't agree. But at least it's important that you listen to me. It says that when, to the end, it says that when you disagree, you disagree to the end. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? But in essence, I think one of the most integral factor uh, of conversation in the church today should be the message, the gospel. What is the gospel? of Jesus Christ. Because again I said, if you preach the truth, the truth will make you free. The essence of doctrine is to the end that people will be established in the place where it's inevitable for them not to have the fruit. Am I making sense? Like it's unavoidable, let me use that word, for them not to have the, the fruit. It's important that you understand this, that when we preach the gospel as we should preach it, the fruit of the Spirit should be evident among us. You see, we cannot say that we are teaching about health and people are not healed. That we're teaching about wealth and people are not wealthy. That we're talking about uh, redemption and the glory of deliverance and people are still dealing with generational demons, things that came from their great grandfather's father's uncle even before internet and, and you, somebody's still dealing with the same thing, you know they're climbing mountains, going on days of fasting, hoping from one prophet to another evangelist from an evangelist to another teacher from another teacher to another apostle uh, you know, and, and they're hearing things every other day and everything is with signification because it's, it's being planted in there. And so their, their, their field is planted, as Leviticus would say, with mixed seed. Right? You tell a believer that you're a conqueror and they say, that's true man of God. You tell them, but I see bondage and they say, that's true man of God. <laughs> You tell him, you're wise in Christ Jesus, and they say, that's true, man of God. Then you tell the same person, but I see that you're dealing with a spirit of foolishness, and somebody says, man of God. <laughs> the Christ that Paul, Timotheus, and Silvanus, in him there was no yea and nay. The Bible says in him there were yes. Praise the Lord. So we must get into this conversation to really ask ourselves a question. Can we see revival without aligning people to the truth? Without reforming our minds and orienting them to think and agree with God? That's not possible. That's not possible. 
And I have learned through church history, any revivals that did not come with a revelation to undergird them really were not long-lived. No, no, they are short-lived. They're just weeks and days and something dies, you know, because God has given us what sustains the world. He says, the world, sorry, heaven and earth shall pass away. But he says, but my word shall abide for ever. We must have a conversation of what should preserve what God is doing. Or else then, we are going to bath flames that are going to be choked out the next day. And then bath flames that are going to be choked out the next day. And we're going to be moving in the cycles. Today it's working, tomorrow it's not working. Today you're up and tomorrow you're down. And then, you know, then the doctrine again comes. You know, Christianity is like that. You know, today things are working, tomorrow things will not work. And then tomorrow things will work. And then tomorrow things will work. But you know, that's the salvation. And then some people accept it. They even swallow water with it. And they say, ah, that's the doctrine. The Bible says that the path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. The message version says the longer they live, the brighter they will what? The brighter they will shine. The law has already been affixed. That the glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former God has designed life to be progressive for you. The Bible says you shall be above only and not beneath. I love that word only. So you, you have then to compare that with what you're being told. Oh, you know, salvation is like that. You know, things might work today. Things might not work. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes manifest the servant of his knowledge by us in every place. Listen, your life is supposed to be like this. And until we open people's eyes and ears to really hear and see what they're supposed to see in God and have true deliverance from the indifference that we see in the hour, I can assure you we cannot see revival. Because revival is an ever-growing flame. From glory to glory. From faith to faith. From grace to grace. That's how it's supposed to be. And I know it's foreign for Oh, the people who venerate poverty and failure. Oh, and then you say, you know why those people are a success? One time, uh, our ministry, when we began, we were moving so fast. We are growing so fast. And so a group of pastors sat down to discuss me. And they said, you know, this is not God. And I said, why? It is growing so fast. You mean we have not served God? You mean we have not prayed and not fasted? We have fasted also. But if you see something growing like this, there is nothing he's teaching that we have not taught. You see? There is nothing he's doing that we have not done. So how can you tell me that he's growing faster than we have grown? He must be using something. Either he has a ring. Some have accused me. Some have accused me that I have a special ring. The moment I put it on the lamb walk, some have accused me that I, I, I have some water and, uh, and, and, and I, I, I went to West Africa and I got power. And I, so I don't, I, and I understand where they're coming from. It's called cognitive dissonance. The, the mind is trying to figure out why is it working for this believer? It's very simple. I believed the truth. I believed the truth. When you understand the truth, even if nobody prays for you, even if I don't pray, you'll see results in your life. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because the word of God is a seed. Luke 8, 11, the parable is that the seed is the word of God. Everything that is preached is being planted in your spirit real time. You're downloading. Hallelujah. Yeah. 